Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do something different. So I usually do uh, unboxings, first impressions, disassemblies, uh, blades or uh, bearing swabs, full reviews. I've done some comparisons. Um, I did one collection video, and I've done like your shittiest knives in your collection, but I've never done like top fives or top tens or anything like that. Um, And I think what I want to do today is my top, my top three flippers, okay? So this is a deployment method I'm not that big into anymore. I do have some. Um, these knives can have multiple deployment methods, but a flipper must be one of them, and it must be the better of those options right uh so you can't have a front flipper and a, and a back flipper and end up you know having a better front flipper you know what i'm saying so i'm doing this straight off the cuff uh, i haven't even thought about it i'm gonna start grabbing knives that have flipper tabs and uh we're gonna start narrowing this bitch down okay so this isn't like top five and then uh i already have it all planned out no this is top three and i'm going through each flipper knife i have and then i'm gonna take the top three and that's gonna be it so i'm gonna start from the back row of my collection i am not gonna be grabbing shit knives so the the mermaid's not coming out none of that stuff's coming out um I'll so a first honorable mention is the Kershaw Atmos. Uh, this is one of the best budget knives out there. Um, if it had a little bit of better steel, it'd be even better. But for thirty-two dollars or whatever, damn, I need to tune this. I just I never carry this. Uh, last time I had it in pocket was for the review. Um, but when you start collecting, this is a knife you want in your collection. When you're at the I spend 35 bucks, 50 bucks stage and I want to try different designs and stuff like that, this is one to try because if you try this and really like it, then you're probably going to like a ZTO 450 or the larger versions or the 0470. Um, just a fantastic sink. I think it's the best Sinkovich design knife there is, to be honest. And I still wish ZT would make a premium version of this. Um, they tried on the 0470, but they made it bigger and it actually just did not pan out too well for me. Some of the choices they made. Um, so anyway, honorable mention there is the Kershaw Atmos. Absolutely love that knife. All right. So going down the line here, the Asher Silva. So this is a budget-oriented knife as well. S35 VN steel and titanium. This was $98.50 when I bought it. Um, absolutely fantastic action. This was my budget knife of the year in 2020. So uh, this is one of my favorite flipper knives. It's flipper only as well. Um, and it's impressive that it has really kept my attention this long. Um and been one of the better flippers that I've actually ever handled. I really like this knife. So uh, that one's probably gonna be sticking around, we'll see. Um, the Finch Knives Tycoona. Uh, this is the Mini Machete. Uh, it's a cool knife, it's made by Best Tech. It's just not my favorite Finch. Uh, it's a solid offering. Um, but action's not as good as I'd want. Uh, flipper tab is a little bit, I don't know, pokey. Um, it's cool. Really cool knife, but definitely not going to be in the top three. The Finch uh, Cimarron here. And, and sorry, that was Best Tech made uh, G10 and uh, 154 CM. Sorry about that. The uh, Finch Knife Cimarron. Uh, G10 slabs there. This one has 12, or sorry, 14C28N. This is a fantastic knife. Uh, this was 90 bucks, and um, Finch killed it with this. The action is phenomenal. Made by QSP. 
great jimping on that flipper tab. That flipper tab is going to be a running theme here with Finch. Um, I really jacked up my index finger nail. So uh, if I kind of slip off or I wince or something, it's because that hurts like goddamn hell when I do it left-handed. So um, just to make this more difficult. This is a great knife, guys. I don't think it's one of my favorite flippers, like top three. It, I'd say it's one of my favorite flippers, but just not a top three. The action is so good. Just the overall aesthetic uh, and steel and everything isn't like the best for me. So like, even though I think it's cool and if you're like somebody who goes fishing a lot, I feel like this is perfect. Um, has that flipper choil that I love from Finch uh, that everybody gives me shit about. Um, but yeah, really cool knife, just not like up there top three style um the finch knives holiday same really good flipper tab you'll see there made by qsp this has stainless steel scales with snake wood inlay uh this one's rocking 154 cm steel on there uh and a warning hey i was just talking in another video that i don't own a warren cliff other than the crawler that's a lie totally forgot the holiday was a warning also, fantastic action on this guy. Um, yeah, QSP just somehow nails the, I don't know what they do, but the D10 is just so perfect for such a light blade. Like, you don't feel it, but it snaps out. It doesn't, it's very hard to fail. It just glides open and locks up. Uh, it's really good. And then my favorite thing with it is the lock bar is effortless to disengage like if you have trouble with lock bars or if you have finger strength issues or whatever a a finch holiday is so good it just glides over you need no effort uh and the flipper is snappy yet soft it's just so good guys this is a really solid contender right here next up is its little brother the 1929 from Finch. Same kind of concept here. Stainless steel scales. This one has black micarta um, inlays, but it is like a smooth micarta. It's not like the rough type. Um, and then you have the loom there. And uh, this one has a drop point or a clip point, sorry. Um, very short, fat clip point. This is one of my favorite little flippers um, that I've ever handled. Um, I really liked the MBK... Easy C 1.5. I had that for a while and it was one of my favorites. Uh, it was actually the first knife I reviewed on the channel. And um, this knife just kept beating it in terms of pocket time and fidgeting with it and stuff that I just ended up selling that because I wasn't carrying it. Um, this one has a little bit of a stronger, snappier detent than the Holiday. Um, but again, when it comes to finger strength and all that stuff, just know that it's a little bit stronger so you feel it now for me i prefer that i think over a little bit lighter uh, it just gets a little bit more snappy it kind of flies out of there a little bit more uh, and then the closing action is absolutely superb on this tiny little guy no blade play none of that stuff um they nailed it and same absolutely effortless disengagement i mean but it's locked up like a bank vault you're not going to like knock it out or anything, but like it just, boop, it's just so good. No resistance, um, no lock stick, nothing. It's just effortless. Absolutely love it. Uh, very strong contender as well, uh, along with the Silva and the Holiday, but these are more budget oriented knives in my opinion. Like this was like 120, so was the Holiday, and that Silva was 98. So I might have something a little bit. Um, you know, a little bit more higher priced um, that would, you know, make the list. And again, guys, uh, I'm, I might have to alter this a little bit because I just thought of something. Uh, I have a knife coming back to me um, that was loaned out, and it's the Holt Haptic. And that knife would absolutely just kill this category. Uh, it would win. I'm like, flat out, it would win. So um, let's just... I want to enter that because somebody's going to ask, like, what about the haptic? Yeah, the haptic would win. I don't have it right now, so I'm not going to include it. But just keep that in mind. So maybe we'll call it a top four and, and number one's already taken. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. What do we got? 
you guys know most of my favorite knives are going to be not flippers. They're going to be hole deployment knives or something. Um, so uh, here we go. This is the Something Obscene Company JK 3.5 or V3. Sorry, that was that finger again. It just hurts. <laughs> um, I don't know if you heard that ting, but I'm just going to do it right here. This knife is just incredible. Um, now, I have contemplated selling it just because it's flipper only. I, I don't know. They don't always make it in pocket. And when they do, it's usually like half a day. And then I swap it out because I get bored. Um, because I can only do the flipper thing so many times before I'm like, eh, you know. Um, but this one has these flamed tie scales and that... Um, bronze i think bra uh, gold accents really uh absolutely fantastic anno on there some people think this is a little bit gaudy or whatever i think it absolutely looks fantastic um it has an m390 blade with a compound grind drop point and it's made by riot and that is the key here because this detent is absolutely dialed it's just sorry it just cracks out um it's not too strong it's not too weak um the way this flipper tab is angled sort of down that's why you'll see me slip off sometimes it's one negative to this knife um but because of that the way you flip it it's just so hard to fail um unless you kind of like start and then slip off like i was doing and that's when i kind of failed it but i'm not gonna be able to do that on purpose so um yeah it's just so good guys this is one of the best flipper only knives i've ever handled and then the aesthetics on top of it just really knock it out of the park and i added gillian salt and pepper bearings it took a couple weeks but they broke in no no blade play nothing and they drop shut like a guillotine um so bearings do break in apparently all right this is a solid solid contender over here um next up we have the kunwu Tao. now this is a newer knife to the collection i am loving it guys titanium handles uh timascus pivot collar m390 blade reversible super deep carry clip uh action you could not i mean you could not ask for better action um it is so smooth and silky when it closes it it's just phenomenal. Um, now, the problem with this guy is I don't know if I prefer the front flipper or the back flipper. <laughs> God damn it, that hurts. Um, I think I might prefer the front flipper a little bit. Um, the detent is fantastic on both. Um, I don't think I've ever failed this flipper. Uh, I really love it, but I think... The front flipper is also just as fun, so I can't really have it be in this kind of category. So that's not going to win. Next up, the Malibu, guys. Um, this is a button lock with... <laughs> this is the best button this lock... This found on the web. According to GMAuthority.com... Cancel. The 2013 Chevy Malibu offers a four-door <laughs> passive entry system that makes use of four small buttons that allow the driver to unlock what the driver's door with a single press on all four doors and the trunk with two presses, okay, rounding out to the convenience of the mid-sized sedan. Alexa, cancel. Sorry. <laughs> what the hell was that? I'm, I said the Malibu? Why did she turn on us? They're talking about Malibus. That was weird. Sorry, guys, but I'm leaving that in. Um, yeah, this just has an absolutely fantastic detent for a button lock. I've never found another button lock knife with a detent so good. Um, yeah, it's just absolutely perfect on the detent. Uh, and it never is going to get to a point where it like hurts or anything. And then you have the fidget factor of it, um, and it being flipper only. Um, yeah, this is definitely going to be in the top three so that's the malibu next up we have the ohlone knives goat version 2 riot made knife and uh it's an excellent small little 
flipper. Um, I really love this knife, uh, personally. I don't know what it is about it. It's not the fidgetiest knife, um, but there's just something about it. And I've had it modded by a buddy on Instagram, MB Wild. Uh, really cool dude. This is kind of his signature bronze finish. Um, and then he did this kind of Merlot uh, dye to the red scales I had on here. It just looks really freaking cool. Um, this detent from Riot on this knife is one of the best flipper only detents I've ever felt, I think. Um, but as of late, I've noticed a kind of flaw in this knife that's been bothering me. And that's, there's like something pokey right down here. And I think it's like this corner right here somehow is sort of, I don't know. It just stabs me when I, so I open the knife and then when I go to close it, like right here, that corner digs into my palm and it's just been annoying me the last few times I've carried it. I'll go to be like fidgeting with it like this and that thing will just start poking me and it kind of annoys me to the point where like I don't really want to be carrying this right now. Um, so I may need to have somebody just knock that down a little bit. Anyway, it's a very good one. Very strong contender, but I think that might just keep it out of reach. So um, that is the Ohlone Knives Goat. And we're closing in on it, guys, here. This is the Tuya NV2. Uh, Tuya Knives, Dave Warren. Uh, absolutely fantastic knife. Sorry, Dave Warren Design. So you see DW2, uh, but it's also called the NV2. The Action is just fantastic. Um, the detent on this is just perfect. Like, just at the point where it's not going to fail you. Um, so it's not too strong. You know, um, really like it. Has a compound grind with the satin finish. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. M390, titanium scales and backspacer and 3D mill clip. Fantastic milling all along this, uh, all along the scales. Just very well done. And the closing is so smooth and um, so close to dropping shut. It's fantastic, guys. This is a contender. But, I don't know, because of the haptic, uh, this is very similar in my eyes for some reason. It may not make it so, but I am going to put it uh, with the contenders over here. That is the Tuya NB2. And then lastly, I think lastly, um, is the Arcane Design Crawler. Um and right there, you'll see how I opened the knife. My preferred opening method is got to be the uh, middle finger flick. Uh, I love this knife, guys. I, I It surprised the shit out of me. Now, I really do like the flipper tab. It's a, such a good push button. Uh, it's one of the best knives I've ever found for a push button. And it's like cut out for it almost. It's so good. Um, and it... It, the detent's a little bit lighter. Like, I can feel this. Um, you can see there. You know, you can feel it. But, like, if you're trying, it flies out. And that push button, man, it just feels so good. I don't know how to explain it. It's satisfying. Uh, but, again, um, I'm in it for that right there. That's just that's the game changer on this knife is that flick. Um, this thing is so badass, guys. If you can get one. You should. I, I know I've said before, I'm not the biggest warranty guy, but this thing is just sick. Um, and again, for what I do, which is not a lot of like crazy stuff with my knife, I'm fine with a tip like that. I actually bought a second one and I'll be picking that up at Blade Show next week. Um, so if that tells you anything, but it's not going to win this because I prefer the opening method with the uh, flick instead of the flipper, even though I do use the flipper probably as much, uh, and enjoy it. That flick is, is where it's at. Um, all right. So, uh, there's one more budget knife. I didn't, I didn't catch. This is the Asher flashback. Um, this is a $38 knife with 12 C 27 N steel, uh, and G 10 scales. Uh, very well done in my opinion for $38. It's not going to win this category, but it's a cool knife. So, um, 
All right, so I have some decisions to make now. We have, uh, let me lay them out. I have the J Cape. I'll kind of do a uh, premium section and then the budget section. The Malibu, the Goat, and the Tuya NV2, the Asher Silva, the Finch Holiday, and the Finch 1929. So I need to get a top three out of this. And again, Holt Haptic would win. So this is for two, three, four. Um, I'm going to pull the Holiday out right away uh, just because basically between this and that, I would choose the 1929. So even though I love this, uh, I'm pulling it out. And so she said, I'm going to pull the Silva out even though I really love it. Um, man, it feels really good. I just, I don't carry it anymore, really, at all. Um, here's a ball stack for you guys, by the way. Um, man, this is tough. I don't know if I want to pull it. It's just so good. I don't know why I don't really carry it anymore, because I, I've had the knife for a while, and, you know, new stuff, expensive stuff. I, you know, I like S35. It's not really that. Um, man, the action's good. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to pull this out. I'm going to hang on there. The goat. So, man, I love the snappy detent on this, but you just saw there. So I have the thing. That's the main thing is that little pokey pokey right down here. And then on a knife this small where that's how you got to fidget with it, it just kills it. Um, yeah, I got to get somebody to knock that corner down for me. And I will. Um, cause I really do love this knife and it's mine, you know, it's customized now for me by MB and that means it's not going anywhere. Um, but there's that thing. And then there's the kind of like, um, the double kind of take thing there where it has a detent ball ramp and it kind of like just snaps back up. Sometimes you have to kind of get it really low on the bolster lock. So it drops down to like there and then you can shake it down. Um, it's smooth, but just, it's just not as fidgety as these other knives. So that one's getting pulled out. Um, all right. Whew. Um, the Tuya NV2, as much as I love the action and everything, I just feel like I'm getting a slightly better detent and, uh, as good of action on probably most of these. Um, uh, and again, it's very haptic-like, so I'm pulling that one out. Uh, all right, so I only need to pull one more, right? Um, all right, I could say probably easily that the Malibu is going to be the second best on in the collection right now so the haptic is the one i don't have i also don't have the vero synapse gen 2 um which technically has the v slot that i i don't really use because it's um right handed um i'd have to have that one in hand and play with it compared to these to see what i think I really do like that knife but i was kind of thinking about selling it anyway um, so I'm going to leave that off of here, but it's a very close, uh, you know, uh, whatever you call it, honorary mention, the Synapse Gen 2 from Vero. Um, all right, so the Malibu is definitely in. And this Finch feels so good. This 1929 is just absolutely fantastic. It really is. It's a good one. It's a really good one. You get that flipper choil. I love the action. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. The only hesitation I have on the J-Cape is you can see there, I keep missing it for some reason. And it's because it's angled down like that, that your finger just can slip off. It's not because the detent's way too strong. Like, watch. <laughs> like, it's just, it's not that strong. Um... But the overall just badassery of this knife and the closing action uh, and the occasional, you know, shotgun ting, um, it just has to be on the list of best flippers. So it's going to be in there.
So now it's between these two. And uh, the Finch, it's a little snappier and a smaller knife. Um, God damn it, it looks badass. The Asher, it just has this weird connection to me. I don't know what it is. Again, knife of the year last year in the budget category. Um, that action is just so silky. But I love the look of this knife with that. I don't know, guys. This is tough. I think just because of the size and the fact that I can carry it lefty and it has a ball sack, guys. Um, I got to go with the Asher. I know it's going to be a surprise, probably. I just love this Asher Silva guy. I've been telling Justin over at Asher... He needs to do another run of these. Um, I think they would sell like friggin' hotcakes if you had another run of these for sub $100 in titanium and S35. And now that people actually know about them. Um, yeah. So, goodbye, holiday. So, uh, oh, one knife I totally missed. Sorry, it was like um, sunken in down there. Is the Runtley from uh, Finch. And, uh, it's just too small for me to even consider. I, I really don't even carry it. Uh, plus, if I had to say, I probably like using the uh, the little nail nick as a, a spidey flick a little better. Um, but it's a cool little knife, little secondary, if you have really small hands. That's how I'll put that. Um, so here it is, guys. Just picture the whole haptic right here. And you'd have your... Uh, top four and if you want we can bring this guy back out and call it a top five we can do that um so top three currently in the collection top five of the collection holt haptic placeholder right here um i think this is a very solid uh lineup right here we're not talking all super expensive knives here i mean we got 200 this one's the expensive one. I think they retail for three fifty, but I, you know, I'm in it for four fifty, um, ninety eight fifty, and a hundred and twenty bucks. I mean, that's really reasonable if you think about it. Um, for the type of knives that I'm really into, as of late, I'm surprised by this list. Uh, but again, I'm not the biggest front fl uh, flipper tab guy. Like only, uh, they did all end up being flipper only, which is interesting. But yeah, guys, uh, that's going to wrap it up here. Uh, I think this was really fun. I'm going to try to do more stuff like this. Um, you know, maybe I'll do hold appointment next. Um, but uh, we'll kind of see how people like this video, and then I'll kind of go from there. So let me know your opinion in the comments. Was it fun? Uh, is it worth doing another category? Um, you know, what do you guys want to see me do more of? Uh, I know that just reviews can get a little bit boring and they can be boring for me too. And I don't, I don't know, as of late, I haven't just had an endless stream of knives coming in. Um, I've kind of calmed down a little bit, been selling things off and kind of reorganizing. But uh, yeah, so that is your top uh, three flipper knives in the collection or top five i absolutely love you guys i hope you have a fantastic day and i will catch you later